So I've come into the site and the first one we're going to look at um, is, is we're going to look at some a walk for symbols. So this can be key stage two, key stage three. So there's a nice little crossover there looking at across those two um, elements. Guys, if you've got any questions at any time, please pop them in the chat. There will be someone monitoring the chat. So if you've got any questions, pop in there. So I'm going to zoom in on where to where I live. So I live down in Southampton. So I'm going to look at my location. And the idea is to plan a walk looking at the map symbols that I can find in my locality. So it's something you can do with your pupils. So it's interpreting maps, looking at ordnance survey symbols and finding out where we can go. So I'm going to identify some of the symbols I have on my map. So I can see some up here. And as I pan my mouse around, I can see some other ones. Now to view the symbols in Digimap for Schools, I can come over to the left-hand panel and there's a button there that says key. Now this key will show you all the symbols at the different ordnance survey scales. So as we go through the different scales, you will be able to see those unique symbols for each one. So I want to identify some of the symbols that I've got. So I can see I've got the lakes over here. So I'm going to come over to tourism and leisure and I can see that I have a fishing lake. I've got a nature reserve. I've got a car park. So if I go that way, I've got a few. If I start to go in the other direction. I can see this cross here. So what can that be? So we've got buildings. I know it's a place of worship. We've got different types of trees as well. We can look at the roads. So we've got different color roads. So I can say, okay, we've got a single carriageway and a second road. And we've also got paths. So I can say we've got bridleways, footpaths, et cetera, et cetera. So I've identified half a dozen or so symbols that I can see in my location. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plan my walk. So I'm going to plot my walk out to see where I'm going to travel. So I'm going to open my drawing tools and use the line drawing feature. You can choose your color line and style if you wish to, but I'm just going to stick with the basic one. So I'm going to say for my walk, because I live here, my first walk I'm going to do is I'm going to head towards the lakes. So I'm going to plot the route that I'm going to go and I'm going to stand somewhere in the middle and I'm going to collect a picture of both the two lakes. I'm going to come back this way, collect a picture of the car park. And I'm going to double back on myself because I'm going to come to this point where I go, I've got a major road here. So I'm going to collect a picture of that one. And then I'm going to walk towards where I can find the church. So I know I can take a picture of that one. And I'm going to travel up this, which is a minor road. But I'm also going to take a picture of the non-coniferous trees. And I'm going to walk back this way. I'm going to find my go down the cutway there, down the public path. I'm going to come to the school. And then I'm going to go, OK, I can collect my images. And I'm going to plot my route back back to where I originally started. So there's my route that I'm going to take us before I go out. So you can look at this with your pupils to get them to work out where they're going to travel on their location and find out where they can go to go past these particular symbols they've identified. Now, what we can also do is we can measure that route. So I can click on it and say, okay, I'm going to measure this so I can work out that I'm going to travel three and a half kilometers. So I'm going to say I'm going to go on a nice long walk to find these symbols. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go out along this walk. So we're going to follow around this route, collecting those images of those map symbols we can see. So then we can link the images to the symbols on our map. So I'm going to come over to our image load tool here over and draw and create. And I'm going to get one of the fishing lake. So you need to go and find those on the hard drive of your machine or on the network that you're going to use. So you need to be able to save those off whatever device you've taken the images on. So now it starts to go really slow. OK, so just to prove this is a live demo. So I'm going to find my image of the fishing lake. So I'm going to click OK. And a couple of seconds, it should give me the option to upload. So it pops an image of the fishing lake on there so I can link those on. Now to grab and move an image around, all I've got to do is move the cursor over and it changes to a little hand. And then I can move that image to wherever I like. So I'm going to pop that image over there. And then I'm going to go and grab one of the church. So let's find my image of the church using the image tool. Again, going off to the hard drive of my machine to find this. So I'm going to find my nice picture of the church. And again, I'm going to upload this and link this to my map. And I should see my picture of my church appear. So a couple of images there and we can do things with the images. So I can click on the image. And it goes yellow like this and then a whole load of tools open up here on the modify. So the first one I can do is I can view my image so I can actually see a picture of the church and how it looks in the real world. I can resize that image. So when I click on the scale button, I can grab the corner, make it bigger or smaller. 
And then when I click on click off that and onto my map, I can make that image much, much bigger. And then we can drag it over and move it over here. So going out, exploring in the locality, being active, getting out and having a walk, could do this with their parents as well, or could take their dog out for a walk type of thing. Collecting Ordnance Survey map symbols as they travel. So linking in that use of Ordnance Survey symbols. So let's show you a finalized version of this one. So here's my completed symbols walk. So it's going to take a couple of seconds. So as we can see, I've gone around my route. I've got the fishing lake, the nature reserve. I've got the major road, coniferous trees, the minor road, I'm taking a picture of the church, the walkway or the pathway, and a picture of the school. So linking those in and out and exploring location. So you can get each of your pupils to do this. Or it could be, as I said, one of those ones when you come back to school, you can also do it around the school locality. Now, what I'm also going to show you is an alternative way to do this, because you may live in an area where there aren't many Ordnance Survey map symbols. So you might explore that piece of map and find there aren't any map symbols. So what I'm going to suggest is you go out and collect images of places that, or places or things that don't have a symbol that you can't find on the Ordnance Survey symbol. So things like we would define as kind of street furniture. So I'm going to show you on the screen, guys, my non-symbols walk this time. So this time I've collected images of the telephone pole, the drain, the park, the bin and the post box. So there isn't an ordnance survey symbol for these, but we can still collect the images and link them to place in our location. So maybe what you could then do with your pupils is maybe say, well, what symbol could we create to show these on a map? So could we create our own symbols? So what kind of symbol will be used for a bin? What kind of symbol will be used for a post box? So get them to think creatively about what symbolization they might use in a locality. So a couple of ideas there around exploring place and using symbols. Uh, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you one linked around the world, okay? So some of you guys haven't seen this, we do have a world map within Digimap for Schools now, okay? So I'm just gonna zoom my map out. And then clicking on the button underneath the plus and minus bar on the right hand side, we'll zoom my map out to show you the full extent. So I can now see the world map. So the exercise we're going to do now looks at location knowledge at key stage two. Uh, we're looking at countries. We're looking at uh, Europe, North and South America, major cities. But the key one we're going to mention here are time zones. So looking at time zones and locations. And of course, this brings in hemisphere and day and night. So we have a really, really useful time zones overlay that you can put onto your map. So what I'm going to do on the map selector on the, on the map here is I'm just going to change my view to an atlas view. So rather than seeing the physical map, I can now see the outlines of the countries. And I'm going to come over to the tab on the left that says overlays. So we've got a, a bunch of overlays here that you can use. And I'm going to use the world time zone one. So this time when I click on it, you will see it will overlay the world time zones on that particular map. So a really nice, useful layer to be able to use with your pupils. Now, what they can also do, link in as well some maths, because you kind of mathematic calculations in there. So we're going to do a little bit of maths, and we're going to look at place and location and see if we can find places on a map and work out the time zones. Now, what I'm going to do here is you get a transparency level. So I'm just going to fade back the time zones a little bit so that we can see the countries underneath. And what I've done to prep this is I've created a little time zone quiz. So I've put it, not this up in Word, but I've um, put it into paint and saved it as an image so I can upload it onto my map. So using our photo tool again, this time I can link in my quiz. So I'm just going to go and find that. Now, anything that's a JPEG image will go into that photo box. So you can create things as JPEGs and upload them. So there's my little time zone link. I'm going to add that one. I'm going to upload this. And fingers crossed it appears. And then I'm going to click into that and make it a little bit bigger. So we can see my time zone quiz. So I've asked a number of questions here. So as you can see, we can work across the question. So the first one is looking at a simple one. If it's 12 p.m. in England, what time would it be in Madagascar? So you can view this on the map quite easy where Madagascar is, but we can see where London is. So we can work out that Madagascar is actually plus three. So can we work out what time it will be? It'd be three o'clock in the afternoon. So let's take one a little bit more difficult. 
So let's take the one where it says Moscow and Vladivostok. So your pupils may not know where these places are, but we can go and search in the very detailed gazetteer at the top here. And it can take me to world places and I can find Moscow. So there's the center of Moscow. So all I'm going to do on the drawing tools here is I'm going to place a marker. So I'm going to click on the marker tool. So I'm going to click on here so I can see where Moscow is. And then the next search I'm going to do is I'm going to do Vladivostok. And how to spell it more importantly. And it will take me to Vladivostok. And then all I'm going to do is put a marker on there. So this time when I zoom out to the extent of my map, I can see those two places located on the map. So it's location, those world places. OK, so we can say which part, which continent are they in? So Moscow does it. That's it's in Europe. Vladivostok it's in Asia. And then all to work out our time zones, we can count the colored time zones. So we can see plus four, plus five, plus six, plus seven, plus eight, plus nine, plus ten, right down to plus eleven. So one, it shows us as well for you guys at primary level who do Russia as your study center, one, how vast Russia is when you're looking at it as a, as a whole. But we, two, we can see how big the different time zones across this country are and how huge it is. So we can look at those world places. And I'm going to go off and do another one here. So I've got Toronto to Cape Town. So you don't necessarily know where these are. So again, all I'm going to do is very, do a very quick search on Toronto. And find these two places. Remember to go to the one in Canada. And again, pop a marker on Toronto. And then I'm going to put Cape Town again into the search. and pop one on Cape Town. So again, this time when I zoom out to the extent, I can see those two places on the co um, across my continent. So we're in two different continents. And this time we're asking the question, if it's 8 a.m. there, what time is it in in Cape Town? So this time, rather than going backwards, we have to work out, are we going plus, or are we going minus? So looking at those. Now, an extra element that you can actually add is we can add a measurement as well. So if we want to see how far these two particular places are apart, we can work out the approximate distance of what they are. So I'm going to come over to the tools on the left hand panel, coming down to the measurement tool, which is our fifth one down. And I can click from Toronto over to Cape Town, my two markers and double click. And it will then show me the distance in kilometers between those two points. So not only can we look at the time zones are where these places are, we can work out the distances between places and points. So it's a really nice one to, to work with here. We get the kilometers and you can see on the left hand panel, if you want the miles, you can also add the miles. So you can make up your own little time zone quiz. We'll see if we can pop this up as part of the webinar resources. So you can take this one as well as you like. But like I said, this one's a really nice one because it links in lots of that world European geography, looking specifically at that word that says time zones in the ski stage two curriculum as well. So, guys, the third idea, because I want to show you some of the resources that we've got on this website as, as well. Now, this is going to be the tricky bit, guys, because I'm actually going to stop sharing the screen with you for this bit, because I'm going to show you this on a PowerPoint, because otherwise it won't make a lot of difference, if I, a lot of sense if I just do it on the screen. So, fingers crossed this still works, guys. Okay. So, what I'm going to hopefully sh show you this time is you should see a PowerPoint. Okay, fantastic. I'm not going to make it big. Now, this one again links into Key Stage 2, but also comes into Key Stage 3 and potentially for use in Key Stage 4. So, this is about collecting decibel noise in a particular location. So, getting your pupils out around their locality, collecting sound levels. Okay, now to do this, you will need, as it says here, you will need a smartphone. Most of your pupils will probably have one. OK, you need two apps. We will need Decibel X, which is a free app for collecting decibel levels. And then you will need either Gridpoint GB, which is the iPhone version app, or OS Locate, which is the Android version. Now, what these two apps are, are they are location based apps. So they will find and pinpoint a location for you. So wherever you're stood, you should be able to get the six or ten figure good reference of that particular point. So we can use those. So they look like this. So grid point GB on the left here will give us a ten figure good reference point. 
uh kim's just asked can you use ipads for the sound you certainly can it just as long as you i've got i've used a decibel x on my iphone it works perfectly fine so it should work on your tablet ios locate is the, the audit survey version it only goes down to six figure but what it does gives you is the altitude and height of a location as well so you can factor that in and decibel x looks like this and it will just literally record the decibel level of where you're stood so you've got two ways of doing this so you, each pupil could record a number of places around their location. So they could maybe pick three or four places in their locality, a quiet, what they think might be a quieter point, a, a louder point, et cetera, et cetera. Simply take a screenshot of where they're stood and a screenshot of that particular decibel level. Or alternatively, what you can do is maybe you could get each pupil to record one and then put them into a spreadsheet for your whole class looking at then who's got the noisiest location for our pupils so you can collate them all into a spreadsheet so to use a spreadsheet in digimap schools you will have to create a spreadsheet that looks something like this so it needs two columns in it one will have to be a location-based reference so in this case it's grid reference and then the second one it has to have a label so i'm going to suggest you put the decibel level in and if you want to record each individual pupils, you could put their name against the decibel level so you could see which one is for which pupil. Now, importantly, guys, this has to be saved as a CSV file. This is the only type of file that you can use in any kind of software. So you will need to find a CSV or save it as a CSV file to be able to do this. Now, there is the option on that. There's a help button at the top of the page when we go back into Digimap for Schools in a second. In that help location, you will find all the help files. And to show you the different reference points, it will tell you under add your own points all the different location formats you can use. So let's jump and show you that. So I'm just going to stop sharing my spreadsheet. Hopefully bring you back into Digimap for Schools. So let's refresh my page. So the help pages are found at the top here, guys. So we can come across to the help page and we can see these key areas. So where it comes down to add your own data, like I said, you need two columns. This will talk you through how you can do it. So you can use postcode, Easterns and Northerns, British Grid Reference and Latin Longitude. So it will walk you through how to make your particular spreadsheet. So what I would do is I would actually load my spreadsheet up, but I'm going to cheat and show you the one I made earlier. OK, so I'm going to come down and see if I can find my map. So this time what I've done is rather than use a map, I've used the aerial image because you've got an aerial image option as well within Digimap for Schools. So I've got my daughters to thank for this because they're the ones who ran around and recorded all the all the. Um, decibel levels for me so you can see the points at where they were stood so that's my spreadsheet so in my spreadsheet there'll be a geo reference point for this one at 79.4 one at 54.2 and so on and so on put them into your spreadsheet upload it using the add your own data tool on the left hand panel and it will automatically geo reference those points on your map so you can very quickly and easily using that spreadsheet collect that information and, put, and show it on your map so we can look at the decibel levels in and around where i live so maybe while your pupils are still at home which is a, a nice one to do before they go back is maybe get them to collect the sound level maybe tomorrow and then maybe look have a look in two or three weeks time when we have some sort of return to normality and there's more traffic on the roads can you see a difference between the decibel levels but this is definitely something you could do in the school grounds as well so you can go to the different areas of the school ground you can say we're going to go to the different corners of the school ground record those noise levels what do they sound like if we come back maybe in september what will they sound like in september when hopefully normality is returned now you have other options as well for different things you can save so you could do things i've suggested um, sound levels but you could also do maybe uh, wind speeds you could do temperatures you could do rainfall so you've got lots and lots of ways you can use that within your own school grounds and a way you can do this as well for you key stage four, three and four pupils out there quickly going to show you a map hopefully you'll be able to go out and do your field trips later in the year so this is an example of a field trip using those two apps. 
uh, using sorry using grid point GB and collecting an information in a spreadsheet. This is actually my daughter's key stage four trip to um, even Beach down in Hampshire. And what we did here is I recorded the points where they were stood and they had to record the sand heights against the groins. So it's a really nice field trip element for your key stage four field trip. And then all we've done then is we've shown those on the map using that spreadsheet. So a really quick and easy way to be able to do that. Uh, so Army has just asked, can we print out the maps with grid references? We certainly can. We can come up to the grid, uh, to the printing tool at the top here. I can click on print. You can print anything out within Digimap for School, so the current mapping, the historical mapping, aerial imagery, anything you overlay information on. You can give it a title, a name. You can give it a scale or an exact and a rounded scale. It will create, you can create it as an A3 or A4. What it actually does, it creates a PDF or a JPEG. So it creates a file that you can save somewhere else on your machine. And you've got the additions here, so we can add a legend. And if you're in Great Britain, you can also add the grid lines. OK, so we can click on that and add the grid lines to our map. So we print this out. We will get the eastings and northerns around our map as well. So you get those options. So, guys, I've given you three really quick ideas there. OK, I whizzed through these, but there's nice ideas you can use both for homework and potentially taking to school as well. What I'm going to do for the last couple of minutes is I'm going to refer you to the resources that are available with the service. So on the login page and you come in, guys, under help and resources, we have a link to our learning resources. So we've got lots of ideas linked into both the primary and secondary uh, curriculum using this service and some ideas that you can use both in school and outside school. Now, we work very closely on the survey, work very closely with the Geographical Association, who are a sub subject association for geography in this country. So we've worked with their primary and secondary leads and created lots and lots of resources linked in. So you've got some fantastic ideas here, guys, that you can come and explore at your own leisure and have a look at and see if you can take any of these ideas and use them in the classroom. We've got some filter options so you can choose how you want to filter them. So if you want to find some of the key stage, key stage three, key stage four, key stage two, key stage one, just click on those particular links and you can find those resources. So go and have an explore of these yourself. And the final thing I'm going to show you guys, I'm just going to get back to the home page. Another way we want to share ideas is I don't know if you guys are Twitter users, but we have a fantastic Twitter link. And this seems to be the media that teachers wish to share ideas with us. So we want to create in the community of Digimap for School users peer to peer examples of how this service is being used. And Twitter seems to be the preferred way to be able to share this with us. So we want to create as many of these as can and share these with you from other teachers. So again, at your own leisure, guys, come and have a look at the Twitter link. It's free to do. And you will see there's some fantastic ideas. Mine's just been a bit slow to load up. Um, but this is showing you some really good ideas of how teachers are using this in the classroom. So, for instance, we've got one about looking at fair trade and extreme weather for coffee. OK, so we've got another symbols walk here. We've got a field work opportunity here for, for, for primary. Um, we've got first to Antigua, just plot in places. For early years, guys, there's a little link here to some early years ideas as well, which are really, really useful. Um, now, predominantly, these are from primary schools. So, But if you have a scroll through, you will be able to see some options from secondary schools as well. So come and have a look at this at your own leisure, guys. You will see lots and lots of really good ideas. And what I say to all teachers when I speak to them, if you also use this service, you come up with a really good way you used it and your pupils really enjoyed it, tweet and tell us about it. OK, and we can share that idea with other teachers and we can keep building on these fantastic peer to peer examples of how to use this service. What I will say, guys, as well, some of these resources are not just linked into geography. They are linked to cross curricular as well. So give you ideas of how you can use this mass history, science and literacy as well. So, guys, we've got about a couple of minutes short. OK, we've, we've had a few questions in. Anybody else has got any questions they want to pop in the chat, feel free. We have videoed this particular um, webinar, so it will also go up on the webinar link on the page on Digimap for School. So if you want to have a look for it again, please do. Um, and also come back and visit the page to see if we're going to run any more in the near future. So I'll stop sharing my screen with you now, guys. 
And if you've got any questions in there, pop them in there and we'll do our best to answer them here, guys. Thank you guys for all the thank yous. It's always good to see some positivity. And remember to keep coming back to the site, guys. Keep looking at those ideas through the Twitter link and keep looking at the resources that we have available as well. Uh, Kim McGovern has just put, is there a, is somewhere I can access an easy step by step guide? What I suggest, Kim, if you come down to the YouTube link at the bottom of the page, there are lots and lots of videos showing you how to do things. So we can come into the videos here. And these are all ideas or ways or functionality within the service. So if we want to look at time zones again, there's a little video that shows you about time zones. There's one there about grid references, one about using land use maps, et cetera, et cetera. So they're 10, 15, 20 minute videos that give you that little insight on how to use it. We also started to post up all the um, homework and ideas as well. So you can come in here and view those as well. Uh, Monica's asked about saving maps. I believe there is a video in there somewhere about saving maps. I can't remember exactly where it is, but if Emma could find it and post it, that'd be really useful. But I know there is a video about how you can save maps. Uh, here we go. There you go. Saving maps within Digimap Schools. Let's see if I can pop that in the chat. Oh, Emma's beat me to it. Also, there's the video, guys. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, big addition was the world map. So you can now do all your European and world geography. I'm, I'm going to put Laura on the spot here. She works at Adina. And I'm going to suggest, guys, that you maybe tweet in with ideas of things you'd like to see covered in a webinar. So rather than us come up with things, how about you tweet in and tell us what you'd like to see? Even if it's just a, a, a 15 minute, 20 minute questions, questions and answers, or you want to see specific, particular functions that you want to see within Digimap Schools, tweet and tell us about it. Uh, Kim, that is that is my job at Ordnance Survey to come and um, come and speak to you teachers. What I'm going to do is I may well regret this, but I'm going to put my email address in the chat here, guys. If anybody's interested in having a session for all the teachers in their schools, please drop me an email. Please don't inundate me, though. That's all I ask. But my email address is in there. Uh, John's asked a very good question there, Emma. I've never been asked that one again. Can you print a specific area based on the grid lines? I'm going to say you can. You can put the grid reference overlay on top of the map and see the grid lines on the map. Let's see if we can quickly show that. So let's come in on the OSHQ here. So over on the left-hand panel, you have the option for overlays, and one of them is the British National Grid. So you can view that overlay. So if you're looking for a particular grid reference, you could then type in the grid reference and have that overlay on top of the map. And that should hopefully give you that option to be able to print by those specific grid lines on the screen. Uh, Monica, yes, the training is free on the proviso that you can get 15 teachers together for the session. As long as there's a minimum of 15 teachers, I will come along or run an online session for your school. Uh, John, the Digimap app is it's something we have on our roadmap. I'm not sure where we are with it, but what it does, it actually works within a browser. So it means that you can, as long as you've got an internet connection wherever you are, you can run it on a tablet or on an iPad. So as long as you've got 3G or 4G wherever you are, you can have it running if you're out doing field trip as well. So it does have that potential to be able to use in the field on any mobile device. 